This is Juliana Rani Capriz, and I'm here in Paris in the atelier of Jim Haynes, who everyone in Paris knows because he's. How many years have you lived here, Jim? Um, I've been doing the dinners for 40 years. You've been in Paris for 40 years? No longer than that. 47, I think. 47, wow. And um, th these are, this is up in Jim's atelier, all the different writers that he's either met or have influenced his life and his writing. And we, we, we'll have to talk about some of those people because it's uh, quite an impressive list. Who was your favorite author, Jim? And you met Henry Miller, I'm yes. sure. Yeah, because he was also a friend of my best friend, Arlene Hickley. Did you know Arlene? Yeah. Yeah, wonderful woman. Uh, George Orwell? I knew his widow. I lived a year with his widow. Uh-huh. You lived a year with the widow? Yeah. <laughs> in Paris? No, in London. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so tell me, you're originally, where were you from originally, Jim? Louisiana. Louisiana, USA, yes. USA, yeah. And um, did you did you study literature at university or no? No. No. What did you study originally? I mainly chased women. <laughs> well, apart from studying women, uh, what else? History and economics. History and economics. Did you do anything with that? Uh. Later I, wrote, later, I wrote a book called Workers of the World Unite and Stop Working. Called what? Say it again. Workers of the World Unite and, and Stop, Stop working. working. Oh, very funny. Yes. <laughs> but uh, so what, what, were your, what were your earlier jobs? I, I, in America, would, would that be? Or? Well, when I was a university student, I had a part-time job working in a bookshop. Right. That's, okay. That's, that's my first In job. America? Yeah. Okay. And, um, and I had some summer jobs in the oil fields of Venezuela. In Venezuela? Ooh, right. And uh, wh where in Venezuela was that? Eastern Venezuela, San Tomé. Do you speak Spanish? I used to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, you are mainly associated with London and the Travers Theatre, aren't you? And Edinburgh. I guess and so, the yeah. arts lab in in the sixties would that yeah, be? Yeah, it was all the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. So what brought you to to England? With the you know the Uncle English Sam. connection. Sorry. Uncle Sam, I did my national service. Right. In just outside a, a, a small base just outside Edinburgh. Oh, I see. So then you developed a love for Edinburgh. Now. An immediate love at first sight. Was the fringe still happening? Just beginning. When did it begin? Because it's well, number one in England, of course. Uh, the Edinburgh Festival began in 1957, I think. Right. And the Fringe began the same year. Right. And when did you get involved? I uh, got involved in the 60s. Right, right. All throughout the 60s. Right. So you came over... Um, and did military service, and then what, you went back, and no, oh, you just released. stayed on? Stayed on in Edinburgh. Yeah. Very unusual for an American, of course, to do that. Yeah. And, and how was life there? Was it, was it the swinging 60s in uh, Edinburgh, as well as London? Not really, not really. Uh, Edinburgh in 1956, when I arrived, hadn't fully recovered from the Second World War. Right. It was dark, it was dank, it was poor, it was... Uh, so why did you fall in love with it then, apart from the fact that it's a beautiful city architecturally? <coughs> I just felt that it was, a, it was a place I could live and be happy. Right. And how long did you live there for? Uh, I lived there for 10 years. And then I uh, went back every Edinburgh... August for the next 59 years. <laughs> right, right. But I heard you'd won an award. 
Wait, 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 wait. In, in Edinburgh? What? I was given an honorary doctorate degree from a, from a university in Edinburgh. Right, right. But I won many awards. Right. I won something called the... Uh, what the hell is the name of that prize? I won a prize for a contribution to theater in Britain in 1965, I think. Right, right. Well, tell me about the Arts Lab, because that was very famous in London. Well, the Arts Lab was a, really was a bigger version of my original venture, which was a bookshop in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And in my bookshop in Edinburgh, I had poetry readings, I had theater performances, I had concerts, I had book signings. You you owned the bookshop, did yeah. you? Yeah, what was it called? The paperback. Right, it was excellent. Reputedly the first paperback bookshop in Britain. Wow. Does it still exist? No. The whole block was knocked down by the University of Edinburgh. Ah. And uh, so uh, shops went down, flats went down, and my bookshop went down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So after the 10 years, where did you go then? Uh, I guess, I guess I went to London. Yeah, I went to London in, in uh, 60... Anyway, the oh. 60s. And, and you founded a magazine, didn't you? I, I started a newspaper called uh, The Arts, uh, called um, International Times, or IT. Yeah? Yeah, and you were the editor? No, I was one of the editors. Yeah, yeah? yeah. How long did that last? Well, I always said it's a newspaper that refuses to die because it's still coming out from time to really? time. Really, yeah. really? Oh, gosh. Uh huh. And, and what was it about? What, what sort it of articles? A, it was a. It covered London and indeed uh, European happenings. Uh, in the 60s. Can you tell me what a happening is? Because that was the big trend in the 60s, happenings. Well, I was using the word to describe any kind of an event. Yeah, but uh, happenings were something special, weren't they? Um, in the future of the theater, many people thought that uh, more anarchy was coming into the theater than it was. It was, it was too middle class, too strayed. And uh, it never did really go that way, but a lot of people thought it was going to go that way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, um, y then you switched and came to Paris? Uh, in 1969. Oh, the year after the revolution, the student revolution. I two things. I started a newspaper in Amsterdam called Suck. I know, that's very famous. <laughs> and I came to Edinburgh, I came to Ed Ed live in Paris in 1969. Right, right. Uh, but why was it? Uh... Well, when I started Suck, I opened an office in London and I knew it was not going to be open very long because of English Puritanism, etc., etc. But was, the French were more liberal, of course. Yeah. And the uh, the office was closed immediately. Oh, <laughs> what, so, the same day? Almost. <laughs> by the police? Yeah, by Scotland Yard, yeah. Wow. What did you have in your office? Uh, it was uh, it was uh, the London office of the newspaper Suck. I know, but you haven't described what Suck was. It was a sexual freedom newspaper. Right, it right. It talked about sexuality in all its aspects. Right. And it was both, uh, and it was very often extremely explicit. Right, so right. So images, paintings, drawings, verbalizing, whatever, and it, and, uh, it was enough for Scotland Yard to close the office. Right, because it was an obscene publication. Like, and, they and, thought so. Yeah. yeah, did you publish it in Paris? No, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. Right. How long did it run for in Amsterdam? It ran for about, no, oh, I guess three or four or five years, something like that. Right, right. Have you still got any copies? Somewhere in the house. I'm very <laughs> bad at, uh, at, uh, organizing. At, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk further in part two. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah.